Hey guys, you're with me, Kevin, your scuba professional, and today I'm super excited because we get to do a double review of the Scuba Pro Luna 2 AI and the Scuba Pro Luna 2 Standard Unit. They look pretty much exactly the same. The Luna AI just has this blue protective cover on it and the Luna Standard has a black protective cover. The Luna 2 AI is air integrated compatible so you can use it with the Scuba Pro Air Transmitter. Just pop that little blue protective cover over because it's a brand new transmitter. So the Scuba Pro Air Transmitter is super reliable. You can purchase it as a bundle or purchase the air transmitter as a separate unit, as an upgrade at a later stage, because the unit does come by itself if required. So just double check that when you do your uh, purchases as to which bundle you want. The Luna, just, Luna 2 comes just by itself as is. So from a feature point of view, we're going to dive in and compare both of them and give it an overall view of where these fit in as far as the dive spectrum is concerned. So let's start with the, the Luna 2 AI. It's quite a nice big watch. It's easy, easy to read, a little bit smaller than an iPhone, but it sits on your wrist really well. You obviously wouldn't wear this as a day-to-day -day watch, but as a dive watch, it is a really big clear display and easy to read. You've got an extra long strap and that comes standard on both items. The extra long strap, so you wouldn't need to put an extender strap on if you're diving on dry suits or with uh, big wetsuits and extra gloves. Um, it does have the little tongue catch over here, so you can fold it up. If you do find there's a little bit flicking over the top, you can always cut that back if you need to and scuba pro have both these units that come with the additional bungee cord connectors so you can disconnect these straps and add your bungee cords which would then contract to your wrist as you go deeper uh, that's especially uh, convenient when working with dry suits which are changing their uh, thickness as you're going up and down through the water as well as the wetsuits as well from an overall feature comparison before we do an overhead and dive deep into the menu navigation these computers are recreational dive computers that do three levels of diving. You have your normal scuba mode, gauge mode, and apnea mode should you wish to go free diving with this unit. A little bit big for free diving, but if you've got the unit and you're doing a bit of free diving and spearfishing, it'll do the sampling rate as you need. On the scuba level, you have standard air, you have normal nitrox, and this can do advanced nitrox as well, with a total of three gas mixes. You'd have your back gas and two side gases for nitrox mixes of up to 100%. They rate both these units to 120 meters underwater. However, to note, you wouldn't dive them to that depth when diving on nitrox you would be limited by your Nitrox maximum depth or Nitrox MOD. You just need to watch that. The units are both oil filled, meaning that there is oil on the inside of the inner workings and that helps with the pressure of the unit to make sure it's more resistant to flooding. Um, you can actually see, I noticed it on the standard Luna, if you move it around, it's going to be very difficult to see on camera, but there's a tiny little air bubble. We have had one or two people, specifically with the old Lunas, ask us about the bubble floating around in the dive computer. There is always the smallest little bit of air left after the units have been air filled. So if you do see the little bubble moving around, it's not the end of the world. They're supposed to be there. As far as the batteries on these units are concerned, they're good for about two years or 300 dives and they are user replaceable. So you can remove the protective cover, we'll just pop that off here and that will reveal the back of the unit and you've got two screws so you can user replace. Just make sure you do that in a super clean environment and that you're super careful with the o-ring. It's a CR243, one of the CR batteries, it's a small round, it's a standard one. It's pretty much the same ones that go in a lot of remote controls for gates I've noticed. So super easy to find from any one of your uh, local pharmacies or even hardware stores you could get that quite easily. Um, from a feel of the units, as I mentioned, it is quite light and super easy to wear, specifically for a unit of this size. Little quirk and feature I like, it's got two little wet contacts at the top. And this is, throws me back years. When I first started diving, we had the old Tusa computers, Poseidon computers in the original Uatec before it got bought over by Scuba Pro. It had little wet contacts, so you had to lick your fingers and then 
touch them on there and that would fire the computer up to let you know that it's about or let it know that it's about to go diving they've kept those in here as well just to fire up the little wet contact and shows a little water thing when you're on the, the screen just before your dive if you don't do that you don't have to these days it will auto start as you roll over and hit the water the unit's going to go straight into its default dive mode um, as far as the additionals in the boxes are concerned, comes with a few other little funky things inside here. You've got your quick start guide, which has got your navigation menus to help you navigate through the menus, as well as a little bit of quick information on how to get to nitrox and battery replacements. A uh, few details on your air transmitter if you've purchased that. Your uh, instruction manual, super important. You read your instruction manual beginning to end so you fully understand the complete goings on of your Scuba Pro Luna 2 or Luna 2 AI dive computer. And it comes with a little QR code sticker for you to download the Log Track app. One of the things I really like with this is once you have um, the Log Track or the Scuba Pro app installed on your phone, it syncs via Bluetooth and you can do almost all the settings on the uh, on your phone itself. You can change the gases, change your partial pressures of oxygen, you can change to altitude, you can do all the settings that you want on your phone and it syncs across to, to Bluetooth and that's much easier than going through the button operation. So that said, let's go right on in to see what's happening with the nav menus with these units. To turn the unit on, you simply just click the two buttons on either side. Just like that, and it'll turn itself on and run its boot up cycle. Once that's done, it reveals the screen. You can see it's got some fixed settings here, the battery, the cute little scuba diver man, the time, the uh, temperature at the moment. Then you have your dot matrix display in the middle there, and that carries all the other information if we just scroll through to the different screens. And if I want to access the menus, I'll hold the right button in to call up those menus. I've got dive, settings, gas, Bluetooth, altimeter, planner, logbook, and then return brings me back out. You note the screen just went a bit darker there because the backlights on this only goes for 5, 10 or 15 seconds and I haven't changed those settings yet, but I'm sure you can still read what's going on. For me to access the dive, I'm going to click one more to get into dive and then I'll hold that button in and that allows me to select my mode, either scuba, apnea, my warnings, or I can return. So if I go into mode, which is scuba, and hold that in, I can choose my scuba mode, my gauge mode, which just turns this into a bottom timer, so it'll give you depth and time, no warnings, and then apnea for free diving or spearfishing. So I'm gonna select scuba, and then it brings me out to the back menu. I can scroll down to scuba to set my scuba settings. So I'll hold that in. You see I now have my water setting. If I hold that in, I can choose salt or fresh. I'm going to leave it set on salt. Then I've got my deco algorithm. So I can either choose the Bullman table, the ADT, or the 16CGF. Uh, We're just going to click back from that. We'll just push the back button. I don't want to change the algorithms there. I have my MB level, which is my micro bubble level. This is Scuba Pro's conservatism factor. I can click in there and I can set that from one up to five, depending how conservative I want the computer to be based on weight, age, uh, fitness level and experience levels. I can be more conservative or not. Um, I've got my PDIS, which is my profile dependent intermediary stops. Essentially what that does is it builds in additional safety stops based on what the computer believes is correct for the dive profile at the time. I'm going to leave that turned on so it may put an additional safety stop in on your way to the surface besides your standard 5 meter stop or your one deep stop on deeper dives. I'll leave that on and click back. I've got my PMG, which is my predictive multi-gas. If I turn that on, if I'm doing multi-gas diving, so multi-nitrox and accelerated nitrox dives, this uh, PMG will suggest to me to change my gas mixture the shallower I get to a higher percentage of nitrox to assist with the washout of nitrogen. Then I can go back to return, so I'm going to click return one more time, and then I have various settings for apnea, if I go inside there, I can set my total exercise, surface intervals, my depths, 
uh, my dive increments and my dive intervals as well as my surface intervals low heart rates on this specific unit not on uh, this is on the AI unit not on the standard lunar the heart rate functionality only compatible on this blue unit and then I can set my speed uh, to come up and down and then stationary apnea if I'm just underwater breathing without swimming and then I have my return my warnings I can go in and set the beeps my maximum depth my maximum operating depths um, how my ascent rate warnings all of that can be set inside there so I can click return out there to go into settings, if I hold that button in, I can set my clock as to what the time is, as well as my alternate time. I've got some user settings inside there. Sounds would be to turn the beeps off for the unit itself. And then I have my return, quite a simple setup. Under gas, if I click in there, I can set my gas mix, my PPO2 max, my partial pressure of oxygen. I have the option for pairing of my um, integrated air cylinder specifically to this AI unit and I've got an O2 reset should I wish to clear my nitrox uh, dives, half gas and reserve. So the half gas and reserve, we'll go back down to that, I can set my half gas if I'm diving on a 300 bar cylinder my half gas would be 150 bar but if I'm diving on a 200 bar cylinder my half gas would be 200 bar. Um, under my reserve I can set either a 50 bar or 70 or 100 bar reserve whatever I want my warning to be to beep at me to start coming to the surface. As far as gas mix is concerned I can enter the gas mix and I can set gas 1, gas 2 and gas 3 so that would be gas 1 is my back gas or my main gas and then for accelerated deco for nitrox I've got gas 2 and gas 3 I can set those different ones but if you are just doing it from a nitrox point of view you would just set gas 1 and in here I could set my change my percentage from 21 all the way up to 100% when diving on nitrox as a recreational diver you've got your 32 to 36% mix and it would change your maximum operating depth as well so we can just click back out of there um, and then we'll just go back out hmm, jump back in again I'll push the left button to jump back out my PPO2 max that's my partial pressure of oxygen I can set that to my 1.4s or 1.5s when I go on the inside here 1.4 to 1.6 bar 1.4 is our standard for recreational nitrox diving I'll leave it set in there and go out pairing we said is to pair to our night to our uh, air transmitters I can pair up to three air transmitters with this device depending on the gas mixes which I go to so that's quite easy we can just go out of that I have my Bluetooth settings to connect to uh, the cell phone app, so or smartphone, so we can do all of our settings. All of this I'm doing here, you can do on the app as well. The altimeter, we can access that. See, it tells us we're at 1,385 meters, and it tells us our bar of air, 0.57 bar. And then it also tells us what our barometric pressure is. It's 1,013 uh, barrier pressure at the moment, and that will go up and down depending what happens with the pressure. I can escape out of that. Um, and then I've got my dive planner. I can access there, and I can change the depths that I go diving to. And you can see it will reduce the amount of dive time that I have. I'm just going to click back out of that logbook. When I click in there, it gives me all the statistics of my dives. This computer at the moment is currently zeroed because it doesn't have any dives on it. But once you log some dives, you'll be sorted. And then I have the return, which brings us out of the navigation menus. So that's pretty simple. Um, almost exactly. In fact, it is exactly the same as the standard Luna 2 other than the heart rate monitor and the air integration technology. So there you have it guys, the overview of the Scuba Pro Luna 2 dive computers, the AI and standard versions. The navigations of both of these units work exactly the same. Your only difference is the AI has air transmitter compatibility. We can sync up to 
three air transmitters on this unit for our accelerated deco for advanced nitrox so that's a great addition and this unit has heart rate monitor compatibility so you can set up the scuba pro heart rate monitor which would unlock the human factor diving uh, algorithm from scuba pro where the unit is monitoring your respiration rate via your dial cylinder your heart rate your depth as well as the temperature and it can give you a true reflection on your actual remaining bottom time based on your air consumptions and heart rates and it'll also very accurately ca uh, calculate your nitrogen loading so it makes your diving super safe so because it starts to build in the human factors that are going on as opposed to all other computers that are just relying on your depth and time this unit is also really really good you can choose as to whether you want to upgrade to the air integration with the heart rate the heart rate monitor band can be bought separately with this unit does then start to become a bit pricey that sort of puts you in the league almost of the the g3s galileo g3s um, and some of the garmin units as well but from an ease of reading point of view nice big clear screen uh, with the colors super easy to read i reckon this is going to be a super popular seller the main advantage of both of these is it's got a very very simple navigation menu to get through on both of them and the batteries are user replaceable. So those CR2450 batteries, I think it is, don't, don't quote me on that, but it is those CR batteries similar to the ones that we use in our remotes. You can get them at most pharmacies and reputable hardware stores and user replace the battery yourself. So that will go a long way in reducing the cost as far as this unit is concerned. And I know from the old Scuba Pro Eurotech computers, some of them going back as far as 30, 35 years. There's a lot of them still in service. We get requests for battery replacements on those and those are the ones with the old wet touches which we referred to a little bit earlier um, they are still in circulation and that is testament to the quality of scuba pro who bought these dive computers so if you're looking for an easy to read dive computer that's going to last you a lifetime of diving i reckon the scuba pro luna 2 computers are definitely the ones to consider so there's our reviews of the scuba pro luna 2 ai and standard units available on our site both of them super super reliable for recreational divers and those looking to do advanced nitrox and accelerate deco so that's it from me guys and i look forward to seeing you in the water really soon